All right. It's going to be funny doing this in, in the round instead of direct. I worked with Lighthouse in 2017 and 2018. We were, we, yeah, we, we began, kind of begun opening up doors, creating space for new work to exist. And I guess five years later, that's continuing. Getting approached with a project like this. Um, I, I, I don't, did I say, or did I just, did, I don't even remember saying yes. What, like, what did I say first? Like you said 360 and I'll just make something work. If everyone, faces this way, I can explain all the little squares that's happening. Okay, so if we go to the top left, this is a kind of workshop that we did in 2018, um, and it was like uh, all female and uh, non-male identifying uh, production group in Lighthouse. That was, I think it was May 2018, that was sick. <laughs> I support a team called Latin Orient. They used the, yeah, thank you, <laughs> bring it on. Um, they used the, uh, the yellow square on the ticker thing. I've been sitting watching this thing go past me for years. I thought this could be used for something artistic instead of, I don't know, an advert for like a plumbers or something. Like let's try and like use every canvas that we see day to day in some artistic way. And I wonder what the things are in Brighton here that maybe could be used slightly differently thinking of how to like bring this thing out of Instagram into real life in many other ways. So this, I guess this square here is like the idea of IRL, URL, <laughs> football, London, Brighton, experience, workshops, Steve and everyone else. All right, we're gonna flip to the screen here. Deep feedback. Um, so with this album, when we made it in a week, um, we released the acapellas so producers could remix it. The fun bit was people sending me back process. So now, hopefully, they're seeing the process inside the process of making something else. And then I did a cover for every person that did a remix. One of one greater than number one. This is, I guess, something I'm not uh, orientating around, getting the most likes possible. It's like, I don't know, every one that we think is in, like, interesting or good or like makes six songs. They're just a unique proposition, unique character, unique point of view. And that is more important than having the number one song or the being the best DJ or being the, like, no one is the best DJ, bruv, don't worry. DJ is a music journalist. I, it, I think this is music journalism in a way, right? Like this is like modern music journalism. I'm commenting on the scenes and communities I'm part of, that the work is an output of work that I'm doing, like, you know, managing in my day job with uh, Flav and DJ Cube and Swindle and uh, Skillium, all these people that we work with, Chand. Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's capturing that. It's a different kind of music journalism. It's not on like, I don't know, a website with funding or something. <laughs> but I think this is music journalism. I mean, is, it, is the stream still working, Bobby? No? Nope? All right. <laughs> All right. We're live. Okay, sick. Not from the glasses. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. I wish you told me earlier on. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can get, I feel like actually natural now. Huh? See everyone's eyes. Hey, I'm Harvey. Um, this, oh, event, this event's mad. I was just going to say that firstly. Um, <laughs> so coming here today, my girlfriend's getting on to me because she's been saying most of these post-it notes for a while. Um, <laughs> but the main problem that I've got is, yes, yeah, so I've got like 200 tunes on my computer, Ooh. but I don't know how to mix a master. And I don't want to release them unless they're up to that quality because a lot of tunes out here nowadays are so polished. So what would you say to get over that and start getting tunes out? Um, rapid fire collaboration so you've started things like i guess 200 tunes is like 200 projects right and it's just finding vessels for them right? whether that's other artists vocalists i don't know session players all these things that can just bring those things to life and then you'll have a route to finishing i think like obviously we can sit there make beats write paint all day but when you have like maybe like another driver to get something finished and someone else is gassed and someone else wants to like drive this idea forward and that's like for a lot of the projects i work on um, with my friends or in management and stuff, that's what's helped got, get things out. The reason why I say not to care about numbers is because pe when people think about getting the numbers, they think of doing the things that people do to get numbers. So they don't think of doing a new idea to get numbers. They think of doing the thing that everyone else is doing to get numbers. So it just creates this, I don't know, 
I follow a lot of DJs. This is like the example I'm going to use. If you open the, the Instagram on Monday morning and you follow 100 DJs, everyone's sharing clips from the gig, clips from the gig, clips from the gig, clips from the gig. Thursday, selfie, flies for shows, flies for shows, flies for shows. All you need to do is have one thing that breaks that algorithm. It doesn't need to be a better version of the camera behind the DJ going <laughs> <laughs> and like pretending you're murking the rave. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think you need to do that. I feel like having a, just a, something different to add to the fold is going to bypass all of that stuff. I think everyone in here is an oh, artist, otherwise you would have no reason to like pop your head in, right? Everyone here is making stuff or thinking about making stuff or made stuff wanting to make stuff like everyone is in that space it's just different vessels i'm i'm not a pop star dude that wanted to be famous like i didn't dj to get gigs or anything like that i was just passionate about that stuff and now i guess because you're seeing so many people's hobbies and things on instagram you think oh it's not worth being a dj or learn how to dj unless i want to be david girl it's like no you can dj just for the love of music and that's where my thing started the same with writing I was writing about grime and London Pirate Radio Culture because I just enjoyed it. I didn't know there was going to be peas. There wasn't peas. <laughs> it's part of its charm. Look, all of, these, all of these pieces of work, like most of the things I do, do not work. I just need that to be clear at any meaningful level. All these small like, little ideas, I'm just trying to like show like maybe the journey of like the DJ thing, for example. It took me like 10 iterations just to get to something concise. You know what I mean? And with songs or with albums or big projects, like, it shouldn't work. It's nearly the opposite. When something works, it's like nearly a miracle. I don't know. So yeah, I think the small bits of this project actually are nothing. It's the cumulative effect of everything. And it's the same with any kind of artistic discipline. Usually the one thing standing alone is it's just a building block, right? The, the thing that I've found, especially outside of London is People feel like they need to have to get to a certain level to be even, be even able to have a point of view. And that's sad. Like people are not making stuff because they feel like their voice isn't going to be heard or not worth hearing or not worth speaking about. That I see it, the effects of everywhere I go. And that I don't know how to solve that. I don't I don't maybe this is like a prod or a you know motivation for people to get going for some for some some reason, but I've noticed that. Like they feel like they have to have a manager or they have to have a commission or they have to have an agent to just to have a point of view. And I'm really trying to shut that down or open that up and go, hey, no, you know, you can just remix my thing if you ain't put out a tune before, figure it out, go on uh, whatever, ditto, upload it, see what happens, you know? Could you give us an example of a roadblock or a failure, if you might call it, um, that you've experienced and could you share how you overcame that? Yeah. Um, I, it, it's so weird because the the scene that I come from was, the, the whole thing was built around not being able to do certain things. So if you weren't getting support in a radio, you had pirate. You couldn't do raves, so we made all these other things. Like the gram scene was literally an infrastructure built out of failing infrastructure and the wider infrastructure not supporting that music. So I'm just used to functioning like that. Like I'm used to functioning with no support. All right, I'd say, all right, the failures of this project is not being able to one sentence it, as you, uh, we've working together on a website at the moment, not being able to go, this is what it is. Elijah is this. That's a failure. If you're trying to sell something or you're trying to get it to a broader audience or develop ideas out of it. But maybe, it may all make sense in the end. That's me. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Yellow square. square one. Enjoy creating, stop comparing. Everyone's got an opinion, don't fear it. Comparison is the thief of joy. And if you listen to the lawyers, you might lose your bearings. Pay attention, square two's deep. Don't feel like you're limited by P. When you're feeling creative, just remember the art is creating within your means. Now that brings me on to square three. Don't model your career on someone who started before the internet was invented. Way back in 1983. Now send it out to the square four crew. Tried and tested through and through. Before you slap that money in crypto, remember the biggest investment is you. Square five's making.
making a lot of sense Living the now but still think ahead Remain open to new ideas Cause nobody knows what's gonna come next Now let's bring square six into the frame You see the idea you're holding back Release it now, stop sitting on game Cause your plan assumes everything will stay the same